Well, hello there. Name's Michael. I had an interesting period of attack that I had gone through. And the enemy used the three prong attack demon cats, mouse spirits, and familiar spirits. You know, the Bible often says a three core, a core of three is not easily broken. Usually we refer to that as with God, which is awesome. But in this case, um, the enemy was using a three prong attack cat demons, and mouse spirits, and a familiar spirits. And the thing is about the familiar spirit was the person they were using was actually alive. And then with the mouse spirit, I've never really heard anybody talk on it. So this is all new revelation to me also. And with the cat demon, I've been dealing with this core uh, on and off at times, especially living in the house I was in. So let's get into this. So it kind of starts off where I see this vision of a high advanced magic attack card of this person. Not sure what to make of that, but a few days later, I end up having this dream. And in this dream, this woman is telling me about this, uh, can you smell all this poop? And I'm like, we need a fresh wind to blow in this place. Because that air is basically become toxic. And I don't think people realize it. And I even had a neighbor, like, they literally slept in their car. And this is real life. But they literally slept in their car because the poop was so overran their house and the smell that they could not actually sleep in the house at, at all. <sighs> Again, back to the dream. And in the dream, I'm like going upstairs to open up a window to get some fresh air in there. And oftentimes we need a fresh wind of God to blow through, don't we? And as I went up to this place to open this window, all like a whole bunch of cats just got in front of the window. And it's like they were attacking me and mentally. Like I, my brain was hurting so bad in the dream that I had to get out of there. And I literally woke up with my brain itself, mostly on my left side, hurting. And if you know anything, like the inside of your brain is not supposed to hurt. Because it really doesn't have those neurons kind of deal, you know? Uh, I, I could be wrong on that. But I remember praying, I was like, Lord, send a rock through that window to get that fresh air in there. I saw a vision of the Lord, uh, maybe not of the Lord himself, but just a rock going through that window to allow the fresh air to come through. And so when normally I'm just dealing with one demon cat, never experienced a whole bunch of them like that before. So yeah, this was definitely a high advanced magic attack or whatever this was that I was dealing with. A few things to know about the demon cat is they're not exactly in you. But what happens is they'll follow you around sometimes and they will actually sleep in your bed because this is my personal experience. And what they'll do is they'll act as your wife. All right. To act as your wife. So that gives them legal ground Basically, to let other spirits in, if you will, and other witchcraft stuff to be done to you. So, you may not have had an open door, but then they'll come and sleep in your, in your bed with you. And because they're a spirit, you don't really sense them. I've actually sensed one before, and I was like, I kicked it out of my bed, went hunting for it, and saw it half dead. Like, bruised batter with its guts hanging out from kicking it so yeah the, these things are actually real they're out there uh, the one thing I will note is they the first time dealing with the cat they kind of it was like a paralyzing agent like it paralyzes me and 
it's kind of main job is basically to immobilize you. Because think about it this way. If you're so polluted and you've got all that polluted smell, you can't smell correctly. You can't smell what's good or bad because your smell is so off whack. You're, because you're in such a polluted environment, you have no energy to really do anything. So it's almost like the cat spirits kind of puts you into a sleep or a stupor in a sense. Now the mouse spirit was interesting because I wasn't, I had never really came across this kind of spirit before. And what the Lord was kind of showing me is a bit about the mouse spirit itself. And the one way it does it is it kind of makes you imitate or become like a mouse itself. So first off, God was showing me about this parasite that in a sense makes you love the cat technically it just makes you so that you don't have you don't smell the poop at all or anything of that nature you're kind of like what poop what pee i don't smell it and because you don't smell all that stuff you fall in love with the cat demon so the mouse spear comes in and it burrows little tiny holes. Think about it this way. A mouse spirit will come into the smallest tiny cracks. And so what happens is the cat demon, it comes and sleeps you, creates a little tiny crack, the mouse spirit can come in and enter. All right? From there, uh, what was I gonna say? So, it makes you fall in love with the cat. Is what the Lord was kind of showing me there. And also act like a cat. So, or not like a cat, but like a mouse. A mouse is very timid. What it does also is um, it jumps at any single noise that it hears. So, automatically, if whether it's God or not... You're jumping. And God showed me this as a symbol of what, what the mouse spirit will do. So it's kind of like there's two roads. There's a left road and a right road. All right? And it will cause you to jump and get on one of those roads. Now, the trick of it is, is the right... Everybody knows it's like, oh, the right road is the way to God. The trick of the dream is, is the right, that road actually leads left, while the left road also leads left. It's not until you're patient and wait upon the Lord that you begin to see that there is actually another path up ahead that actually re leads right to the right direction towards God. So... The mouse spirit will actually make you afraid and timid and make you jump at every single noise. Now, if you're getting false visions that you think are from the Lord and you're jumping upon them, they're going to actually lead you left, and that's the trick right there, isn't it? You're not waiting upon the Lord for further confirmation on things. You're just automatically jumping on those. And so I realized that part of the mouse spirit was actually um, corrosive in nature. What it did is it ate away at stuff and it kind of reminded me of taking the things of God and destroying them. Because it eats everything that's good and all the fruits that's in your life, it eats them up. And it basically creates its nest inside of you in a ways. So you got all this stuff. And here, here's the trick. It's kind of like, I remember having this dream of this really nice, shiny boat. I was clearing all this dead stuff away. And in this um, dream, it was shown to me that there was this spot. And it's like, this... The only way that spot, that hole could have happened was because it got eaten through. 
And that's part of what the mouse's job is, that it eats through. Now, when I was trying to clear the dead stuff away, it actually made the hole bigger. And later in, like, the next scene of the vision, where there's a bunch of people around the bonfire say, hey, come to the Lord. So the trick here is, like, being close to the fire of God, where it's kind of like you get up close to the fire of God, and you think about it, the leaves are going to get burned up. The dead stuff is going to die off. So the dealing with the mouse spirit, part of that part is you have to get close to the fire of God to have all that dead stuff get cleared away. And with the mouse spirit also, um, it was reminding me of a character I know, uh, which basically has a Kwame. And this Kwame is a cat uh, spirit. Basically, they fuse together to create this so-called superhero zero, hero called the cat. Or not called the cat, but needless to say. So they basically, it's kind of like the mouse. And it makes, it makes you into a mouse. And because you're in love with the cat, because it makes you in love, you basically become one with the cat. And I have remember uh, the Lord kind of showing me in a dream that this was a dragon that I've actually had to face before. Like, it was a thing that had corrosive acid to it. And I remember in another dream where I was actually trying to teach a few children, a couple kids... Like, you're not ready to battle this kind of spirit. And I was trying to keep them away from it kind of deal. So, yeah, the mouse spirit, it has a corrosive acid. And it reminds me of a dragon level, almost. So I'm going, I'm battling this thing in my, uh, as I'm kind of like through the night. And in the night, um, I hear this woman's voice like i'm not going to enter into his dreams tonight i'll enter in tomorrow i'm like oh well that that makes sense now because i was talking about how like the mouse it gets into the house and so it was creating this opening where whatever spirit it was was allowing it into my dream so you may have had a godly dream or the and then the mouse comes around and creates chaos in that so-called godly dream. And, or it may have just created chaos, period. So yeah, I may have created chaos, period. The other thing is, as I was battling it that night, I heard the Lord say, the love spell has been broken. I'm like... Well, that's interesting. And I did feel different. And I'll tell you the truth. I felt more of a peace that kind of came over me. Now, I would say the love spell that was being broken was against this uh, one person. And kind of a teacher sort of type person. And the Lord's kind of used this person to teach me a few things here and there. And... I don't know the person personally. But the love spell was broken. And the Lord had me get like, okay, now, now I want you to order the book. I'm like, okay. So the love spell is broken. Now the Lord wanted me to order their book. That's interesting. But I did it. So that was the case. And the next night, I literally hear, like, or maybe it was that early morning. I can't remember what it was. But I remember hearing that same woman's voice. Like, the doors are closed. Like, she couldn't get in. Like, I could hear her trying to get in, but she couldn't. Like, she was trying to enter into the back way. And so, I had basically dealt with a lot of the cat demons already. I dealt with the mouse spirit already. Now, when it came to the familiar spirit, I was kind of like 
clueless as to what I was doing dealing with. Now, I had some idea, like the Lord was kind of giving me a verse where uh, talking about Saul, and he was dealing with the familiar spirit. It's like, Lord, am I dealing with the familiar spirit? Now, I didn't really get an answer. But he also gave me the verse, like, don't trust in a guy, don't trust in your in your wife or your friend kind of deal. And then he's giving me the verse where it talks about Saul and the familiar spirit. And... The thing I learned with dealing with this familiar spirit, and I'll tell you how I kind of came to the realization of this, um, was I realized how Saul loved Samuel, the prophet, more than he loved God. And I was thinking about this and the storyline of Saul. Like, at first he began, he, he started off with witchcraft. You know? And, well, that was the demon cat that I was dealing with. Like, okay. And then the next thing was the mouse. And I'm like, looking at the story of Saul, I'm like, yeah, he kind of acted like a mouse. Like, he jumped at every single noise. He had unrest. He was weary. He tried to kill the very persons of God. And I was like, during this time and this period, too... It is almost like they're trying to turn me against the person in one sense. And then the next thing you see is Saul dealing with um, a familiar spirit. So I'm like, Lord, this is what Saul went through, what he failed to understand. Like he was actually going through this, but he failed. And so the Lord started saying, like, okay, do you want to know something about this person? I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want to share with me? And I'm like, uh, he basically says, I want you to fast for a day. Just out of the blue, waking up. And I'm like, you want me to fast? I'm like, okay. And, you know, when it comes to the Lord, and he's talking about you fasting. It's like, it's kind of almost a good thing. And it's like... It didn't really make any sense to me in a lot of ways at the time. Like, why am I fasting to learn something about this person? And the love spell was already broken off of me. So I did as the Lord instructed me. And I was basically not to eat until the next morning. After I was basically waking up that morning and was not supposed to eat or drink or eat anything for that day. And as we do know, fasting, sometimes prayer, only certain demons can come out through per, prayer and fasting. And as I was doing so, that night I had a dream of this person. And in the dream, it was kind of like they were trying to hinder me from hearing from God. And they were telling me, it's like, yo, you heard from God wrong. It's like, I kind of knew that I had heard. Like, I was going to go back and kind of reconfirm, kind of get more of a clarity on it. But I was just kind of writing down a little bit there. And I heard the last word. Like, I was trying to hear it, but the person was arguing with me so much that I couldn't hear. It was basically, I felt like the enemy was using this person to prevent me from hearing from God. And the one thing I noticed is during this time, it was almost like this person would keep reappearing and it almost felt like they were trying to, during this time, bombard me with this person to the point where I felt like, like, I want God. This person is almost feel like it was invading my space and so what I end up learning from all this was um, like Lord what is this what are you trying to show me because I knew this dream was showing me something and what ended up happening from all this is I end up going into like a vision or maybe a dream as I fell back to sleep and it was as if this there was a snake like where the person was was actually just the tail of a snake 
and it was curled around like almost in a circle. And this is what the Lord was showing me that this snake was imitating somebody. And I was researching about the tail, like when a snake will actually use its tail to mimic another per like another mouse. So a mouse who's basically a prey. So the, think about it this way. You're, the demon cat comes in, kind of changes you into a mouse, or in the nature of a mouse. And then the other spirit, or the familiar spirit, acts as a decoy to lure in the prey to eat you. Yeah. So, basically, it was imitating uh, this person. And this person was alive. Now, I want to state, too, that the Lord can actually use people in your dreams that are alive um, to give you prophetic dreams also. So you got to be discerning of what this is. But it was using its tail to basically as a way of trapping its prey. And it basically imitates something to lure you in to eat you. So yeah, it'll lure you in to eat you. And in the process of this, um, it was show. It, it was kind of like the Lord was revealing this uh, little thing. Now, y'all, those that know the cult and all that stuff, and some, or at least some small aspect of it, know of the snake eating the tail uh, metaphor. So there's this circle where the snake is actually eating the eating the tail. And what the Lord was kind of showing me is like, well, what was on that other end of the tail? Uh, it was its prey. Yes, yeah, so yeah, there is death. So basically, it's showing that little circle with the snake eating its tail is actually it's eating its prey because the prey jumped onto the tail. So the only way, the reason why it's actually eating its own tail, it's not really eating its own tail. It's actually been eating the prey that was attached to the tail. So yes, it is life for the demon that's eating you, but death to the person that's being consumed. And so, yeah, death, rebirth, life. Well, I say, hey, you're the one dying because you are the snake's meal. And the snake gets to basically feed off of your energy, and that's life to the snake. So in all this, uh, where do I say it with all this? All right, so from here, I want to just kind of give a brief recap of all this. As uh, he was showing me the story of Saul, how he started off with witchcraft. He kind of became like a mouse and paranoia and scattered at every single time of noise. And he almost, he had a love spell for Samuel, but not for God. And that love spell, if you want to put it bluntly, was for a false image of Samuel. It was for a familiar spirit, in a sense. Because that familiar spirit in the Bible was actually just the decoy. It wasn't the real Samuel. So, first off, you're, the demon cat comes in. It sleeps with you. Creates a soul tie with you. The mouse spirit comes in and makes you basically fall in love with the cat demon. So now you kind of become one with the cat demon while the cat demon's luring you into being the prey for this familiar spirit. And in the process, a familiar spirit's trying to imitate something or someone that actually can be alive or dead, it doesn't matter which one, and basically eat you and consume you. So this is just kind of a way they do it. So yeah that, that is that's kind of the battle i went through the cat demon um sometimes that can be dealing with lust and stuff like that it can be an open door uh, and the cat demon will actually sleep in your bed will come and sleep in your bed with you that's how they do it 
And then, yeah, the love spell, you're going to have to break some love spells because that's kind of like part of the mouse spirit is the love spells and all that stuff. And then, you know, don't trust uh, was one of the verses that it gave me and saw with the familiar spirits. <clears throat> and you may need to uh, pray and fast. God may call you to a fast and to pray. Because I know with the cat, need a fresh wind of God, need a fresh flow of God. With the mouse spirit, it was um, definitely, uh, what was it? getting close to the fire of God itself. And with the um, familiar spirit, it was fasting and praying. And I was casting that spirit out that night out of me. Like, it was coming out. I, I felt I felt a few demons come out of me that night as I was battling and warring. Okay, I feel like the Lord wants me to pray. So, let's pray. Um, Lord God, I just pray and break any familiar spirits off of the people right now. I first off, I want to break any cat by any any legal ground that cat demons may have with the people right now, and break that off in Jesus' name. I pray that any love spells, any mouse spirits would go in Jesus' name. That all those doors would be closed and all the holes would be covered up with your fire, Lord. And that the things that have been eaten away would be restored. And from the familiar spirits, Lord, to be driven out and not to find a place and a home that they would realize the trick of the enemy and the wagging of their tail, Lord. Reveal the snake's tail to them, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray right now that the people that listen to this message, especially to the end, would find healing and hope for a new day and that they would begin to hear from God in a fresh and new way from being delivered from all this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, now this is God bless for now. <laughs> Bye.